Live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman. And uh, everyone, I hope that you're having a fantastic day and uh, you're ready for, of course, a full hour of Computer America, where today, if you are a longtime listener, then our guest should be no stranger to you. Happy that we're able to get her, get her on uh, one more time before the end of the year. And uh, yeah, because we have a lot to talk about. And of course, the holidays it's uh i think a lot of people you know every other month they'll go out and they'll buy something that they want something like that but they save a lot of their big purchases for this time of year and um yeah you know tech is usually on high on people's list so to help us navigate that none other than sandy burger confikiss.com and of course longtime computer america correspondent Hope everyone out there is uh, looking forward to that. And before we get started, a couple of things, including ComputerAmerica.com. That's where you'll find a link to our guest website. You'll also find uh, articles, reviews, things like that. And also be sure to check out the live video feed at our website or at twitch.tv forward slash Computer America, where we have a chat room, all that good stuff. And uh, and yeah, I, that's about all we have for now. Oh, and I guess I should keep mentioning it every single, every single show. Uh, Computer America. Our last show of the year will be December 21st, and then we will be back January 2nd, I believe, is our first day back. And then, you know, we're going to have, of course, our guests and our regular lineup. And I would say, uh, Computer America, we ourselves are not going out to CES this year. We're going to be doing as much coverage as we can, but we're still going to be inviting a lot of companies from the trade show back onto the show after CES. So that'll be our own form of coverage where we'll have lots and lots of, lots and lots of things to talk about. So all that and more, uh, computeramerica.com. And why don't we just bring on Sandy and uh, get this conversation started? So as I said before, compukiss.com, that is her child, but she has been writing in tech, reviewing tech, and just been around tech for a you know for quite a while now. And we are happy to label her our consumer electronics expert so welcome onto the show once again sandy Berger. sandy how you doing hey hey ben it's it's really good to be here yeah happy to have you here again and uh and you know like we said before the show glad that you are doing well and uh, and all the good stuff i mean obviously uh you're also here in north carolina so just got hit with the snow apocalypse because everything is an <laughs> apocalypse uh, of some sort but uh but yeah I, I mean just since you've last been on everything going well holidays going good Everything's going well. Uh, went to a wedding in Chicago and didn't get any snow there, but came back to Raleigh and found snow here. So you just never know with life. Absolutely. Um, so, but we did not get as hard 
hit as you did in the western part of the state. So yeah. I can't complain about that. Matter of fact, I don't think I can <laughs> complain about anything. That is just what we want to hear. But um, but hey, sometimes some of your best segments on the show here are when you complain and when you review something and you don't quite <laughs> like it. But uh, that's, but that's true. <laughs> yeah, and, and so obviously you came with a list of different topics that you'd like to talk about. And although I think the first one you weren't really complaining about it, in fact you were quite uh, quite actually advocating for it you enjoyed uh something and this is a product that i've I, I bought once a while ago it broke uh through no fault of its own and i just gotta say that the kindle line of products i had the original kindle you know the the regular e-paper one uh, i loved everything about it. It, it it was so nice to read on that uh you know i i i i like kindle ever since then but at the same time i know that amazon continues to develop the kindle line you think how do you per, you know improve perfection um yeah let's start with our first topic and the amazon paper white kindle what what and is this it's brand new um this is actually i think the fourth reiteration of it um and i liked it um I like the Kindle like you from the beginning because the e-ink is very, very easy on the eyes. It's great to read. You can go out and read it in, in bright sunlight. Um, but the very first paper white that they put out a few years ago was not good at all. I did nothing but complain about it. Mm -hmm. So there was my complaining. Um, <laughs> they had they It was supposed to be backlit, but the lights ran up and down so you could see them under the words. Um, really bad, bad news. Um, I contacted uh, Amazon about it. They didn't want to hear about it. Mm, okay. Uh, but they must have heard from me or from someone else because on the second iteration that they made, they corrected that problem. Now, the paper white was great for the, you know, several um, versions that they had. But the new version, they've taken uh, into consideration some of the shortcomings and they've improved it even more. So the new paper white is waterproof. Uh, I don't think it's totally waterproof. You're not going to drop it in a swimming pool and expect that it's going to, you know, leave, leave there for 10 minutes and it'll be fine. Uh, but if it gets splashed or, or, or get some water on it, um, it will be fine. And so that's the first thing. The waterproofing was great because when you're reading something in bright sunlight, you're able to take it to the patio, you're able to take it to the beach, uh, you're able to take it to the pool. So um, you want something waterproof. And that was a big improvement. Second improvement they did on this, they added Bluetooth. Hmm. Um, now that might not seem like much, but I personally, now I read hardcover books, I read Kindle books, uh, you know, digital books, right. and I also listen to audio books. And uh, the reason that I do that is because at the end of the day, my eyes are usually so tired from having worked on the computer all day that I, you know, don't always want to read. So I listen to audio books. And that is what they're giving the paper white this time. Bluetooth capabilities allows you to listen to Audible on the paper white and uh, do it wirelessly with Bluetooth headphones. That is, and, and of course, uh, the idea of the Kindle, I mean, for a lot of people, it's that you load it up, you know, it's better than a book because you can have access to any number of books. Even if you don't have, let's say, internet access, you can load up a Kindle with a number of right. different books. And I guess you can also load up audiobooks and, you know, if you're not near an internet source or, you know, or a source of data, then I guess being able to stream or listen to your audiobook on your Kindle, that's that's a big deal. Like, like, like again, I, I kind of associate Kindle with reading. Uh, how is Kindle with audiobooks? I guess that, that's a new experience for me. Okay, it's absolutely perfect. Um, so, so you just... Um tell it what or show pick out the audio book that you want and it'll start to play and it can you can stop it and you can read for a little bit and then you can go to the audio book back and forth keeps track of where you're at and the same is true for uh, the Amazon Echo uh, so if you have uh, Alexa and you can just tell her read my book and she will start where you left off on your book you want to read a different book you just name the book and she'll bring it up for you so it's all done automatically. Um, it's really, it's great, uh, especially for older people 
who, you know, you got a grandma or a grandpa that you want to buy for this Christmas, uh, the paper white is a great, um, just a great present. Yeah. So, and of course, we're looking for it here on on Amazon. Uh, and I, I think it's pretty well known that Audible they used to be uh, separate, but now they're a subsidiary of uh, of Amazon. So, if you're looking for audiobooks, Audible I think is still one of the biggest selections you can have out there. And I'm sure that right. that's pretty well integrated with the ecosystem. Very well integrated with the ecosystem. And um, if, you've, if you're looking at the uh, website right now, you'll find out that the Paper White is on sale right now for $99. Um, and there's a really great deal, a bundle deal, $139 for an 8 gigabyte Paper White plus um. headphones, wireless headphones. Plus, if you're not already an Audible member, you get three months, I think, yeah, three months worth of a free trial. You know, I was actually looking at the old one, the previous generation, because that's, it, because when you type in uh, the Kindle Paper White, or, you know, Paper White Kindle, uh, the mm-hmm. previous one pops up first. So there's actually, you're right, it's uh, 99 bucks. So th- this one's actually cheaper than the previous one. And obviously through a sale, but they seem to be about the same price or even a little bit cheaper. One thing that I wish that they'd improve on, you know, and just looking at this, I saw the old one and it's still with the new one. Uh, And hey, look, you're right. It's uh, dripping with water. But uh, I wish that they would improve kind of, and and, and I know know it's such a small thing, but uh, the bezel, it's a pretty massive bezel for the device. Like, uh, it's uh, you know maybe an inch or half an inch on each side, two inches at the top and bottom. It seems it seems excessive to me. Well, um, I think it's all in the eye of the beholder um, because when I uh, pick up the uh, paper white, that bezel gives me some place to hold it, so that I never have to move uh, yeah. my fingers off the off the text. So um, I like it. Um, I think they did a great job by. Adding the the features that were needed, um, which they don't always do, and the the uh, the sale price for this bundle is um, the the headset that they uh, give you with this bundle is uh, sells for seventy nine dollars. Nice. So when you can get the whole thing for one hundred and thirty nine dollars, that's really that's really a good deal. Well, like Amazon does with a lot of their other products, uh, obviously, you know, getting the hardware that's uh, you know, they'll probably sell you, sell you that at a, at a loss lead just to kind of get you into it. But uh, yeah, I, it, all right. Here's a good question: uh, Have you found yourself buying more books since you've got the Kindle? Um, or has your book buying stayed consistent? I think I've actually bought more books. I've probably been consistent in the number of books I read, um, but I have more books that I haven't read now, um, which is great because, you know, you, you can get them anytime you want. Uh, they don't go away. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm into the Audible audio books. Um, and those are great too, because, they don't go away. Not only don't they go away, but if you buy a book from Audible and you don't like it, you can return it. Right. Um, even after you've read it, which is which is a pretty pretty good deal. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, and, and that's my point was that once you buy the hardware, the once you get over the initial investment, even if they kind of um, I don't know make it a bit easier for people, they know that they're going to make it up on the back end by people actually buying books. And for a company like Amazon, who long, long, long ago, uh, that was their bread and butter, was their book division. I, I think that um, you know that's something that they're perfectly, perfectly comfortable with. So looking at this, uh, let's see. So one thing that changed for, from the previous iteration to this generate uh, this iteration uh, looks like they increased the uh, the pixels per inch, or you know, I guess. In some, I don't even want to say resolution, but they uh, have you found it. Yeah, easier no to resolution read? is that's a, that's a good word to use it for it because they have improved the resolution. And if you put the old uh, paper paper white next to the new one, you'll it's enough to see the difference. Right. So they not only have improved that, but it's thinner, it's lighter. Um, if you have an old paper white and you're happy with it and you don't want to listen to audio books. That's fine. Don't don't even look at the new one. Right. But if you have someone you want to buy for, or you want to really treat yourself, and you listen to audiobooks, um, this is a really good deal. 
plus I have to say, limited time only. There have been times that I have um, told somebody about uh, an Amazon sale that they had and they'd go the next day to get it and it would be gone. So I know right now it's on sale. I don't know how long it's going to last for. One other thing about this, if you if you go on the um, Amazon website and mm-hmm. you look for this product, you're going to see it immediately listed, the paper white audible bundle, including the paper white, the wireless Bluetooth, stereo headphones, etc., cetera, um, at $169. Right. Well, that is for the 32 gigabyte version. Yeah. And, and if and, you click on oh, yeah, 8 yeah, gigabytes... Uh, 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 yeah, no, I, I'm sorry about trying to interrupt you, but uh, but yeah, so 32 gigs, and even beyond that, I didn't even know about this third option that they have. I guess they're also pushing includes the Kindle Oasis, which um, I guess, hey, you know, if you're a stickler for a bezel, looks like the Oasis uh, has a bit smaller of a bezel and much much more expensive at 250 as opposed to 100. So, right, it's um, yeah. It, and it's not included in this bundle, but it's available right. if you want right. it. Right. Um, yeah. The thing that I don't like is that they highlight the 32 gigabyte for 169, and you have to click on the 8 gigabyte to see the 139 price. Now, 8 gigabytes might not sound like a lot in today's world, but when you're talking uh, textbooks, uh, you know, mm-hmm. text or even the audio, it does not take up that much space. So. Um, the eight gigs is is pretty adequate for for most average users. And even beyond that, if you know, if my memory serves me correctly, you can like uh, you know you you have like a marketplace or a store that you can buy from. And as you know, if you do find yourself reading so much that you do fill it up often, you can just uh, delete or uninstall books that you've already read, and then load it back up, and you're good to go for you know weeks at a time. So even That's eight right. gigs, it's really not it, you know because once you purchase them, you own them forever. It's just a matter if you have them installed or you know downloaded or not. Uh, there, there's that one. And, and by the way, I do find it funny that, uh, so there, there's always a big deal about black Friday, about cyber Monday, about these kinds of things. Uh, you know, that's the only and best time you're ever going to find a deal for technology, but I just checked out, uh, camel, 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 anyone out there who hasn't heard about that, go check it out. Camel, camel, camel.com. And it's a good site to track prices to make sure that you're not buying at like a premium. And I just checked that out. And with the new Paperwhite been out since, I guess this chart goes back to October 16th, probably came out mm-hmm. somewhere around then. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, this deal just started like three or four days ago. So it was, uh, this is the best price it's been, even including Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Right. And um, this particular Paperwhite has like a 16 hour battery life. Not bad. So if you are going on vacation, it's really nice. I mean, because you can grab it and never have to really worry about the the amount of charge that's left, of course, until you get to the end of the 16 hours. But it's still it's it's still fun to use. Um, really, uh, really nice present. Boy. You know anybody that wants to buy me one of these? <laughs> oh, I have an old one. I'm okay. <laughs> no, but but, um, but it's very cool, and I certainly agree that you know giving giving a book is um, I don't want to say it's dated because there are lots of books that even I would like to receive, but uh, you know giving someone the ability to I guess read a book and that's where Kindle has separated itself from other kind of reading tablets or just tablets in general is that tablets tend to hurt people's eyes. You know, they are usually LCD. They, you know, they have a short battery life in in comparison. They just really aren't good for reading books, but the Kindle, uh, much like let's, I think the other product was Barnes and Noble Nook, which I haven't heard much of, of that since. But, um, but but yeah, I, I mean, if you know someone who's an avid reader, the Kindle has always been the go-to present for that person. That's right. And the price for books is really inexpensive. When you asked, do I buy more books now? I probably do buy more books now just because they're cheaper, because um, you can get a book for um, – Three ninety five, a dollar ninety nine. Um, Amazon gives away free books, free, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with with their Prime subscription. Um, they also have a Kindle lo- lending library where you can go 
to the library. You can go to a regular library today and get out Kindle books as well. Um, so the books really do come out to be cheaper. And basically, you're going to pay a lot for something that was just released, a brand new book that's got a lot of excitement behind it. You're going to pay a bit more. Um, but the classics, the great books, the, the books that you've always wanted to read, um, uh, plus romances are, are out there too. So there's always something to read, and it is at a cheaper price. And that's yeah. something that I saw, and this might actually launch us into our next kind of topic, which is uh, I was just checking out a book uh, from one of my favorite authors. I'd never even heard about it, but, you know, it's so hard to get the word out about things these days. But right. I saw, and they were, you know, you could buy the soft cover for 9 bucks, you could buy the hard cover for 13 bucks, or you could, you know, get a digital copy. Or, here's the thing, they had the Audible audiobook for free with a trial. And Amazon, with you know, uh, specifically with Amazon Prime, they're very good about giving free things away just so that you'll give it a try and hopefully maybe forget about it, you know, leave it on the card and, you know, just keep getting it. But let's switch the conversation over to Audible because I think that's going to be a pretty big part of, you know, Kindle going forward. Um, Audible as a service, could you tell people what that is if they've never heard of Audible? Audible is uh, audio books, and uh, they, they come down digitally, so you don't have to do anything um, special to, to purchase an Audible book. Uh, you can read Audible books on your computer, on your tablet, on your cell phone. Uh, just about any device that you have today will read these audio books. And um, basically, Audible is a subscription program process. So you subscribe um, to buy one book a month or two books a month, that sort of thing. Or you can buy a yearly thing with a whole lot of books. Um, one book a month is somewhere around $14 and two books is somewhere around $21. Um, it's a very good deal. I have been using Audible, oh gosh, forever. Um, I, I went to see Audible to see the company when they were down in Florida before they got purchased by Amazon. Oh, yeah? And uh, I was always impressed with the way they ran things. I have never had a problem with an audiobook uh, that they didn't take care of immediately. Um, it's just an excellent company that I could highly recommend. Now, when you do, um, if you buy one of these, like this bundle, um, and you get three-month free trial to, to Audible. That is only if you are not a current user. So if you already have uh, an Audible account, you will not get the three-month free. Right. Um, you should be aware of that. And and Amazon does a pretty good job of, of putting it right on there. And that it will, it will your Audible subscription after that three-month free trial will auto-renew. So you have to give your credit card in order to get this. And if you don't cancel it before that time, they'll charge you for that uh, extra book a month. Mm. Um, you know, you just, you do have to watch it if you don't want it. Um, Audible also has things that you can, you can, um, you can do a vacation stop for like three months or something like that. Um, and I do something that very, very few people know about with Audible. What's that? Um, I go ahead and I get two books a month for three or four or five months, however months, I, I add up my credits. So you get basically, say I have six credits. That means I can get six audiobooks mm -hmm. anytime I want. Okay, but since I'm on a subscription plan, they keep charging me for those books. Well, maybe I don't want any more. So um, basically, if you change your subscription with them, your credits are no good anymore. However, they do have something that very few people know about, and it's actually not, I can't even find it on their website. I had to call them when I wanted to do this. It's called Inactive Light, and that is $9.95 a year, not a month, but a year. Um, if you subscribe to that and you have credits already built up, like I have six or eight credits, I get to keep my credits for a year. I get to return books, I think one or two books every six months. Mm -hmm. And I can also access what they call channels, which are like podcasts. Very interesting stuff. They have they have scientific stuff from TED, um, all sorts of different things on their channels. And you can still get that for $9.95 a year. 
So what I've done or what I do is I build up six or eight credits. That's how many audiobooks I'm going to use in the next year. And then at the end of the year, I go back on and get more, more credits, you know, that I'm charged more for. But it works really well. It sounds like a plan that uh, obviously they would prefer you to be a full-fledged member and, you know, keep doing the $15 a month. But right. um, that one seems like a very good deal for people who, I guess, you know, they get books as they kind of see them. They don't, uh, I don't know. You seem like a very good use case for that. Um, and you say that you can't really find that, or at least they don't really advertise that as much as they do the full-fledged uh, subscription. Right. It used to be, I used to find it on the website. Hmm. Now under their account listings, I don't see it there. But um, I called, I asked for um, this process. I explained what I had and she says, oh yeah, you had an active light, nine ninety five a year, no problem. Mm -hmm. So it's just something people should be aware of that you can do because I think most people are like me. Um, I accumulate credits, I accumulate books, and then I can't can't read them all. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and if that happens to you, you don't want to keep on buying books. You don't want to cancel your account and lose your credits. So this is a good way to, to handle Audible, and it works very well for me. I hope they keep it forever. So, and, and you know, before we even kind of switch uh, something here, I wanted to ask about, because uh, since you've been on the show for the past couple of months, or even I would say the past year or two, uh, we've really gotten into the topic of digital assistance. You've already mentioned that if you have an audio book that, um, that Alex will read it to you, but what other kind of integration is there with, uh, you know, with digital assistants? Is there, uh, you know, can you order books through them or manage your library through them? Um, I, I mean, is there any benefit other than just having a different device to read you books? Is there any benefit to getting these digital assistants? Uh, definitely. Um, reading the book is the main thing because you can, um, you can have uh, a Kindle. Um, I'm sorry. You can have a, a echo device in two different rooms and you can go from one room to the other and say stop reading my book continue reading my book so you can be all over the house and it can read to you now i will say that google also has a google play store for books um, but it's just not as comprehensive and not as easy to use as amazon's so i advise people if you're interested in reading books um, and Audible is one way to do it. Now, uh, Alexa can also read to you for books that are, are not Audible enabled, but a lot of their books, they can read, be read to you in the um, Amazon Kindle's voice, in Alexa's voice. And that works out really well, too, because you're not even paying a premium for an Audible book. Of course, her voice is a little... Um, computerized yeah. so you don't get you don't get inflections and in that by when the book is read by the author um you said can you order books through the uh, echo device right. yes you can you just you tell her what book you're interested in and she'll even play a sample of it if it's an audible book um so you can order books you can order audible books um anything right through the echo device very, very cool. And and then, uh, you know, one more point that may seem obvious and stupid, but uh, I should probably mention it. Uh, just to be clear, um, the, and, and I'm talking about the Kindle Paperwhite, but uh, the Kindle Paperwhite is in black and white, correct? No color on the tablet? That's, that's right. And it used to be just, used to be just one color. I think it was black i think mine is black i have a cover on mine but i think mine is black uh and now they have it in black or white well uh, well not even the actual color of the device but also i mean like if uh let's say there's like a book cover you know uh, when you're shopping for books the store is in black and white like the only colors that the tablet displays are black and white correct yes that's right. correct. That's e ink is is only black yeah. and white. Well, I I remember them having a uh, colored e ink, uh, and that might have been just with the Nook um, for a while. But, um, but yeah, some, and yeah. I think that some uh, Kindle books can come in color, but it wouldn't be on the paper white since that's right. only black and white. Um, maybe you can read a book with colored pictures, 
on your Kindle, um, on your Kindle Fire or your other Kindle devices. Right. Just want to make that clear for anyone out there who's maybe now thinking about getting one and then getting it and like, what? I can't watch movies on this thing. Uh, no, this is again no, primarily it's not just for, for watching movies. Yeah. Mm. Just for reading, just for reading. So very, very cool. And I think when, when we come back, because we're about to head into break here in the next 30 seconds or so, uh, Sandy, we are going to take a trip to a website that, uh, you know, that you you may have heard of, uh, CompuKiss.com. You have a lot of new content up there. And a lot of it is kind of in relation to what we've been talking about when it comes to voice assistants and, uh, and with the Kindle Paper White, you have your review printed up there. Uh, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about, uh, if you don't mind, some of the articles you've posted at CompuKiss.com. That'll be great. Perfect. So, everyone, uh, there's the music. Stay tuned. More Sandy Berger, more Computer America. And when we come back, we will be doing things such as, oh, let me see. I think when we come back, we will be doing uh, tech gift ideas. And, of course, all the articles that uh, co- that Sandy has posted, you can check them out. Again, CompuKiss.com. Link in the show notes. Link to everything in the show notes. Everyone, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer. And again, airfare... What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? Low-cost airlines. With one call to low-cost airlines, you'll drastically slash your travel costs. We're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations. Where would you like to go? London, Rome, Costa Rica, Australia? Wow, that's cheap. So why wait? Call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the U.S. or international. Our prices are so low, we can't publish them. The only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airline travel. It's that easy. So call now and start packing. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. That's 800-215-4461. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 32 minutes past the hour. If you missed any part of today's show, feel free to head out to wherever podcasts are heard. And you can, of course, check out Computer America. Search us there. And uh, everything from the Google Play Store to iTunes to iHeartRadio, so on and so forth. Computer America should pop right up and you can get everything right there. It's simply today's show rebroadcast. Uh, at your convenience. We uh, we certainly appreciate that. And for everyone out there listening to us live on IRN or checking out our video feed, hey, that's okay too. We uh, we, cer- we certainly appreciate it. So we are continuing on Sandy Berger as we are doing, uh, you know, we've talked all about the Kindle Paperwhites or uh, I believe, yeah, yeah, uh, or uh, the Kindle Yes, the Kindle Paperweight, there we go, really took up the majority of that, but we also squeezed in some Audible, and Sandy, like I said uh, before the break, you have your review up here, so uh, obviously, CompuKiss, you've written for a lot of different publications, but if you could just explain real quick uh, the purpose of CompuKiss, and talk about, uh, I guess, your perfect gift, the review that you have up on your site.
so, you know, technology gets pretty complicated. I try to make it short and simple. And even now, 15 years later, I'm still doing the same thing. And now if you look at the website, you'll see that my husband Dave Berger has has uh, put some um, articles out on the website as well. So um, it's become a family thing and we love doing it. Yeah, I, I saw that he uh, and I recall he had a uh, he had a review up for a little while, uh, you know, before this batch of content. Uh, so, yeah, glad to see that he's sticking with it. And he has uh, and he has his own thoughts and opinions like he's his own individual. That's uh, that's very cool to see. So, uh, again, uh, anything that you kind of wrote in your uh, your review of the paperweight on the site? I mean, you gave the price here. Uh, you mentioned the bundle. You mentioned it was very, very, um, you know, it, it was uh, great waterproof, all the good features. I mean, although I, I will say one thing missing here is a link. You need to throw links into your articles. But other than that, um, yeah, it looks like it's yeah, just a Yeah, I can review. do that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm used to reviewing things and telling people what it's all about. And, and as we just talked about, this was a, a really good price. I hope it lasts for a little while at least um, because, like they said, limited time. But it's really a good deal. Um, what I'm finding this year is that Amazon is getting a lot of competition from Google. And um, there are now Lenovo and Sonos and all these other um, manufacturers are getting into the voices thing. And so Amazon is really focused on getting their Amazon Echo devices in as many homes as possible. So if you're out looking for a really cool gift this year, Amazon has it, and they have some really great prices right. um, because the competition is out there for them. I gotcha, I gotcha. And then also in kind of the same line, uh, because uh, as usual, it seems like one of the biggest gifts this year was a digital assistant. Uh, a lot of people have been getting them. I will say that the adoption rate, I'm sure, is better than even Amazon or Google has, uh, you know, has hoped for. And you have an article up here about the best small voice assistant in 2018 and this is something that you know uh, I have a friend who recently bought a house and I think it was with the security system that she purchased she um, yeah they actually gave her two Google uh, mini homes or you know wh whatever mm -hmm. they're called uh, they get like they gave her those with the uh, with the security system these things are finding inroads in a lot of different areas in people's lives uh, let's do a small recap. Let's uh, let's talk about you know uh, again, kind of on the speaker. Uh, I'm sorry, the cheaper end of the spectrum or the less expensive end of the spectrum. Uh, what what did you what did you kind of recommend to people if they're looking for their first digital assistant? Well, I recommend that um, they try either one. Um, they can actually try both at the prices that are out there now, twenty to thirty dollars for. Um, an Amazon Echo Dot or for the Google Home Mini. Those are the small ones. Um, that's really not, that, that's a tremendous price for what these devices can, can do. Um, so get one, get both, and see which one you like better. You'll find that they're both very, very good. Um, um, and I used to always say that Google had the better mix for music and Amazon Echoes had the better mix for books. So if you want to read books or audiobooks, I still say go with um, Amazon. However, Amazon is now getting into the music idea a little bit more than they did before. So the, the article that I wrote for the website, The Best Small Voice Assistant in 2018, I have surprised a few people by saying it happens to be the Amazon Dot, mm. which is a small Echo device. Um, not the Google. And it's because they improved it so much. This is the second, uh, no, the third version of the Amazon Dot. Uh, you don't want to buy the old, well, you could buy. If you want to get in the cheapest way possible, right now Amazon is selling a Dot for $20. $20. But the newest Dot, the third version, is $10 more. So that's only $30. And for $30, the difference between those two products is tremendous um, in that the new dot is a little bit better looking, 
but more than that, it has better microphones, it has better speakers. In a side-by-side -side comparison that I, that I did, no one, no one at all chose the Google Mini over the Echo Dot mm. as, far as, as far as the music and how it sounded. So if you want to play music, you know, go with the brand new Echo Dot. Don't get the older one. Um, if you want to get into the Google Home, and I have both, you can have both in the same house, no problem. Um, but the Google Home Mini is also very, very good. Uh, Google actually answers questions better than Amazon, which right. you might expect, right, Ben? Yeah, no, Google has certainly been able to leverage, because you really have to consider what the two do. I mean, uh, Google, very, very good at answering questions, search results, things like that. Uh, they're very good at that. Whereas Amazon, on the other hand, are very good at providing services, and that includes music as well. So makes uh, makes perfect sense. And I'm glad to see that you actually do recommend both, uh, because obviously Amazon was the first, but Google certainly has... Uh, you know, been been finding its own niche, and even beyond that, there are other you know products out there from other companies that are trying to break in, but uh, no one's been able to hit that you know that really the twenty, thirty dollar, forty dollar price range that uh, that these two companies have. So, right, very good to right. see. And they're all uh, they're all on sale for the Christmas season. It wasn't just a Black Friday, although some things were a little cheaper on Black Friday. Um, basically, Amazon sales are keeping up, and so are Google. Uh, you can find Google on sale at the Google Store, on sale at other places like Walmart, um, and you can get some really great deals. Um, one in particular is something my husband wrote about on the website. See, he's he's a, a television person. Mm -hmm. um, He's a television junkie, I say, and he had actually admitted to that as well. Um, but there's something we talked about a couple months ago when it came out, the Fire TV Cube. Yeah. Um, the Fire TV Cube, uh, let me see what the price used to be. I, mm, $119. I, yeah, it, it, it was more expensive as far as like the Fire TVs go, but it was supposedly the one that to do, I guess, more. It, it, it was one of their best Fire TV products that they'd put out at, at that point. And um, now for the Christmas season, or for however long Amazon keeps it on sale for, it's $69, which I think is, is fantastic. And it is not just a streaming device. So the Fire TVs are simply streaming devices okay you can you can do netflix you can do hulu you can do hbo uh whatever with your fire tv stick and you can get into that fairly cheaply because they're like um i don't know something like 30 dollars right now um actually 25 dollars mm -hmm. the fire tv stick is at amazon for 25 dollars so you can do that but what the fire tv cube does for you is it allows you to put all your devices onto the Fire TV, um, and it is Alexa enabled. So you can you can say Alexa, turn the TV on. Alexa, change to the DVD player. Alexa, do whatever. Find uh, find a certain video from Netflix or whatever. Um, the thing is that it works beautifully. You set it up. Set up is easy, and then. The Fire TV Cube will actually change the input for you. Now we have seen people that uh, that get very frustrated uh, because they have all these remotes and they have to use a different remote for everything. Yeah. And switching the input is the worst part about it because you have to remember what input which device is on, and then you have and to remember which remote to use. You, and, and heaven help you if you get someone to house it for you. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> right. have to write up a whole user manual on how to just watch TV. Now, I'll just this, this is just an aside, Ben, but you can you can put the whole manual into Alexa, and she can tell whoever's house sitting for you. She can tell them how to do things. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, but to, to go back to the Fire TV Cube, um, it also works with uh, cable TV. So if you still have a cable TV subscription. The Fire TV Cube, not the Fire TV, but the Fire TV Cube, will control that as well. 
Uh, it'll give you the guide. It'll you can go up and down, do whatever you want. Um, but a lot of the streaming devices are just for streaming, and you cannot incorporate your cable TV, which this one will allow you to do. Yeah, and and that is something that um, really appeals to me because obviously uh, there are people in my household who are very remiss to give up a live television. Uh, you know, it, honestly, if it were up to me, I would not pay for cable whatsoever. Simply use a couple streaming services, and that would be my life. But they love live TV, and from what I'm reading here on the website, uh, you can plug you know any of the big cable providers into the back of the of the uh, device, and it should be able to come through just like that. And you can turn you know from let's say Netflix to a your cable provider, which is uh, you know which is a pretty good. A pretty good deal because blending the two, uh, to me, it's getting uh, that certain those certain people in my household, getting them comfortable with the idea that uh, Netflix and Hulu and these other streaming services are just like TV, just simpler and better in all in every way. But just getting them, you you know, kind of toe in the water kind of deal. I I, I really do appreciate that feature. I think that's one thing that I really like about this uh, TV cube thing is that you can have cable and you can have Netflix and you can have them all. Um, and you don't have to use an app. Okay, so if you have Roku, I love Rokus too. They're very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, no problem if you want to get a Roku. However, uh, uh, if you want to watch your cable TV on Roku, you have to make sure that Roku supports it. Um, so they do support Spectrum, which is my TV provider, right. um, but you do it through an app. And sometimes the app just doesn't quite work right, or sometimes you have to try it two or three times before it gets going. Um, when I hook the um, my little um, cable box mm -hmm. to the Fire TV Cube, there's no wait, there's no uh, hesitation or anything like that. Um, it, very, very good for the person who doesn't want to give up cable completely, but wants to get into watching Netflix and other other streaming things. Yeah, and uh, and uh, per personally, I've said so many bad things about my cable provider that uh, if I ever said their name on the air, I'd probably be sued for <laughs> you know, slander. But uh, but but I will say that. Hey, even even though I don't like it, uh, the fact that uh, you know they still provide it, and there are some things that you just can't replace yet with uh, you know with a streaming service. So again, there's that. Uh, there's also the Fire TV Cube, Fire TV Recast. Never heard of that, but, um, but oh, hmm? okay, good. I was going to tell you what Recast is. Uh, no, no, please, um, I'll go for it. Okay, Recast is uh, actually very good. From now, I have not tried it personally, so um, it's it's very good for um, TV that you get over the air. So I'm not an, I'm like 90 miles from any big city. I don't get any TV over the air, but what Recast does is it hooks hooks into anything that you can get over the air and gives you uh, a DVR and everything like that. So it's actually a little bit of an investment, um, but it's a way to, if you can get over the air TV, I, I understand from several people that it's very, very good. Yeah, we had a company on the show here that, uh, you know, selling digital antennas. I guess right now the primary market for uh, digital antennas for over the air stuff are people in, let's say, RVs or people who travel a lot or the ultimate cord cutter where you still want those live TV shows, but you don't want to pay for them. Uh, right. You know, I, I, I guess it's kind of like my generation. They don't realize uh, that over the air is actually how TV used to be and it still is and it's completely free. And the fact that you pay for these channels through, uh, you know, through a cable provider, that's just like, a, 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 that's a completely different service where they're charging you for something that you could technically get for free. Um, but the audience is growing. The idea that you can grab those off of, you know, off of the ambient uh, airwaves around you, that's coming back. And I guess products like Fire TV Recast, uh, I guess Recast, kind of makes sense with the grabbing them, recording them, and watch them anywhere you want. That makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea for some people. I don't think it has a huge marketplace. Um, 
but there are some people who will gravitate toward that sort of thing and get yeah. uh, for a small investment get free TV. It, it's it's not as good as uh, as a la carte uh, streaming services because obviously you know being able to choose what you want when you want it where you want it is better than just hey what does my antenna pick up today right now at this very moment. Uh, one's definitely better than the other, but it but it's an option. It's an option. So uh, again, going back to uh, you know to this review that uh, you know that your husband wrote and uh, replace your device remotes with the Fire TV Cube. So he's actually taken to, and, and you know, he's again making the point that uh, having a remote for your sound system, a remote for your TV, a remote for your cable box, and maybe a remote for uh, something else thrown in there, all that can be replaced with just the Fire TV Cube. Yeah, pretty much. Now, you might still want your, um, if you're on cable, you might still want your cable remote to change channels quickly and easily, which you also cannot do with an app. Um, so it, you might still use one or two of your remotes, but, uh, it all works very, very easily. Setup is easy. And if someone house sets for you, Ben, with the cube, you wouldn't have to give them so many instructions. Absolutely. And I, I guess even on top of that, uh, we were, you know, we, we've talked about, the fact that Amazon devices, just like Google devices and any other connected device, they tend to get better over time. You know, there are regular updates, there are new features, skills, things like that, as more product services companies tend to tie into these hardware offerings. So, right. yeah, hey, it, it, it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving. That's right. So my original Amazon Echo that I got three years ago, I think more than three, a little more than three years ago. Um, has been updated to the point that it can do everything that the brand new Amazon Echo that you buy can do. And that is is something phenomenal. You know, we lived, we grew up in a, in a society where everything was uh, disposable. You know, you, you bought a refrigerator, it worked for five years, you buy, buy another one, that sort of thing. Um, so this idea that things are upgraded automatically and keep on upgrading um, is something to really cheer about. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as tech goes, even, you know, refrigerators are one thing, but I mean, computers have, I think for a while there, they were on like a two to three year life cycle. That's right. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely see, definitely glad to see these things go. And even beyond that, I think uh, smartphones and things like that are, you know, getting a little bit longer in the tooth, which is uh, good to see. So there's that. I think the last topic, we have just under 10 minutes to kind of talk about this. And I think you've already given some pretty good ideas, but uh, holiday tech giving ideas. There's still, uh, you know, there's still a good two weeks or so to, you know, kind of shop for Christmas, plenty of time for a lot of these devices, anything, you know, today's consumer technology landscape is really large. Like everything, like Apple has a bunch of really cool gadgets that I think a lot of people haven't, uh, you know, really turned on to like, let's say the AirPods or the Apple watch. Uh, there's plenty of streaming devices. You mentioned the Roku. That's a lot of people's go to. Uh, as far as technology goes, tons of headphones, tons of speakers, tons of toys. I mean, anything that really catches your eye. And, and I know just under 10 minutes, but uh, what I, I okay, how about this? What categories are really impressing you lately as kind of a gift idea? Well, your smart home devices that we've talked about for this whole show, um, voice assistants. But along with the voice assistants come um, connected light bulbs, connected thermostats, uh, switches. Um, So if you have somebody you're looking for, um, they already have an Amazon Echo or they have a Google Home, and you would like to get them into the next stage of it, Buy them a little switch, um, which will cost, you know, like somewhere around $20. And some some people are giving them away free with different things this year, um, where they can plug the coffee maker in and then tell Alexa or Google to turn the coffee pot on or whatever it is that they, the lights in in the living room, the lights in the bedroom. Um, There are a lot of little things like that that you you can get people a little bit farther into the smart home and 
and once you get into it, it's I think it's very exciting. Um, now there's ring doorbells. Um, one thing that I've been impressed with is the new Apple Watch. Although you have to have an Apple device to go with that. That's the only thing. If right. you have a, an Android phone, you're not going to be able to do the Apple Watch. But Android will come out with uh, things that probably get up to the same par as the Apple Watch. But the Apple Watch right now, um, that it can take your um, a EKG and it can warn you if you're you know, at risk for a heart attack or certain types of heart attacks. Is, is phenomenal, and I expect to see a lot more this year at CES of health-related things. Now, I was sorry to hear that you're not going to be coming yeah. to CES this year. Oh, yeah, that's, on, uh, that's uh, too bad. Unfortunately, and, and it's just this year, I really, really, really hope to make it out uh, next year. We have some things at home that we have to take care of, but um, we we have partnered up with uh, with one of our other correspondents, uh, Pop Zara. They're going to be handing, you know, kind of just walking in the door and just kind of throwing our cards out like, uh, you know, like, like rappers do with money. And we're <laughs> hopefully going to get our card out to everyone so they can come on the show and tell us about what they're going to show. But uh, but no, I'm not going to be able to make it out to Vegas to, uh, to enjoy the sights and sounds. Are, are you going to be able to make it out there yes uh we have uh, made our reservations and we're ready to go that is awesome uh, and, and of course looking forward to uh to debriefing you after after ces if, if you wouldn't mind come back on the show obviously your regular time although uh to be very clear you're normally on the second wednesday of every month uh the second right. wednesday is literally in the middle of ces so right. we're we're definitely going to have to reschedule you for later in the month but um but yeah and and of course out there at ces that's actually a good topic because this will be the last time we talk to you this year but um is that also what you're kind of looking forward to out of ces is just where connected homes are going or i, I mean what well ces is goes, such a, ces is such a broad show what's kind of your thrust like what are you going to be going for I love information on quantum computing, which is the next big quantum thing. And I saw a replica of a quantum computer last year, so that was exciting. Um, but there are other things, like I said, health-related items are going to be really big. I'm hoping there have been some breakthroughs in hearing aids for older people um, because the hearing aids that we have now are not all that good and they're extremely expensive. Now, over the last couple of years, I've seen more and more things in that venue. Um, I think we're going to see more like that. And it's not just smart homes, Ben. It's smart cities. It's smart countries. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's unbelievable how, how these sensors are on light posts and all over certain cities. And they can do more and more every year. So it's going to be, I think, very exciting to, to get involved in in some of the things and i'm sure there'll be surprises for me too yeah i i, I will say that uh, you know just from the companies that are already contacting us about you know what's going to be shown out there there's a company uh, it, it was like gourmet but you know i'm sure that they have a different way of spelling it but uh yeah they have you know they traditionally have made things like pressure cookers but this year Ever like almost every single thing that they have between pressure cookers and uh, coffee makers and things like that, everything is connected. Everything's going to be smart. Uh, getting some kind of automation intelligence into, uh, you know, into these devices for the kitchen and the bedroom and more places. It's you're I I, I, I want to say you'd be surprised, but I think you would know better than anyone how quickly this is going to start being introduced into people's lives. It already is. I mean, last year we saw internet connected uh, washing machines, dryers, we refrigerators. We saw the Alexa microwave for the first time this year. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, and nope. Some <laughs> of these things, <laughs> some of them to me make no sense at all, like the Alexa enabled microwave. Well, it can order popcorn for you and it can cook it exactly the way you want it. Um, would I use it? Probably not. And I expect that we'll see a lot of things like that because the Consumer Electronics Show basically is something where companies come to throw things against the wall to see what sticks. Um, they can't all be winners. And we see products that we wish would come back next year and don't. We see other products that take off and we're amazed. Um, so 
that's part of the fun of going to CES is to to see everything that there is to decide what I think will make it and which ones I don't think will make it. Sometimes right. I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, but right. um, it's exciting to see and I expect that there's going to be breakthroughs all over the place this year. Looking forward to it and of course looking forward to speaking with you for next year and for a long, long, a long, long time yet. Uh, the music playing in the background, but Sandy, I wanted to give you an opportunity. This will be the last time you be on for the year. Uh, would you like to say happy holiday everyone? Have a great year, all that good stuff? Oh. Definitely. Happy holidays. Have a wonderful year for everyone. Uh, come back and visit the CompuKiss website. I'm going to be doing a lot more on smart home devices, on Alexa and Google Home, and what you can do with them, uh, what they can do for you. So come and visit me at CompuKiss.com and um, have a great year, everyone. Looking forward to it. So everyone, as I said before, links to it in the show notes, although copy kiss is not that hard to remember. Sandy, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on and right. uh, and have fun out there at CES and hey, catch you next year. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah, and have a good one. Bye-bye. Everyone else out there, thank you so much for tuning in to Computer America. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we are just about out. And Sandy, actually, if you just want to stick around for just a second after the show. But everyone, catch us Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back tomorrow. Everyone, stay tuned.